Welcome to For the Record. On this program, we talk about issues and events that are of interest to people in Sudbury. Today I have with me two students from Lincoln Sudbury High School. I have Rob Sokoloff, who has been instrumental in starting Students Against Drunk Driving, and I have Rob Dupuy, who has been very active in Student Athletes Detest Drugs. I'm going to start with Rob Sokoloff, who's going to tell me a little bit about how SADD got started in Lincoln Sudbury. Um, my freshman year, SAD wasn't uh, too popular. I was a freshman, and freshmen tend not to join clubs. Sophomore year, there weren't many um, students actively involved. Uh, at that time, there was a senior who was the president, Callie Thorne, and um, that was my sophomore year. Uh, the beginning of the junior year, uh, the SAD representative or teacher, you know, parent. Mm -hmm. Faculty advisor, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, there was no. Uh, she had other things to do. She, she uh, resigned from her position. Mm -hmm. So I, I realized that, well, the end of sophomore year, there was a really big uh, event at Wayland where SAD got started, the nationwide organization. Um, so the... My, my junior year, you know, we had to do something, especially my grade and other grades, a bunch of crazy kids. Well, I was going to say, Rob, you're saying you had to do something. Is that because some of the numbers were showing up that people your age were getting involved in maybe drunk driving accidents? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. not, not as much so accidents, but I knew they were doing, you know, they were drinking. Mm -hmm. And it really had to be brought up, you know, the subject had to be brought up. So you got started on the Students Against Drunk Driving. Yeah. Uh, you know, about how many started with you? Let's take you to your junior, senior year, because that seems to be when some of the action started getting a little bit of impetus. What I did was I called the um, the president of SAD, Bob Anastas, which is out of Marlboro. He, he used to teach at Wayland High where it originally got started years ago. His, um, his, uh, he was a hockey coach, and one of the hockey kids died. So that's how it got started. But I called him. I met him my, the end of my sophomore year at this this big uh, meeting in Wayland. And then junior year, I called him and asked him what I should do, since we have no advisor. And I asked for his support. Now, have you since developed an advisor over here at Lincoln Center? Yeah. Um, say two, three, four months into my junior mm -hmm. year, the freshman hall office secretary, uh, um, Pam Olafsky, uh, who has and had uh, previous um, drug, uh, she's taken drug courses and mm -hmm. drug background and you know, all Some these. Some training in recognizing these things and perhaps what to do about mm -hmm. them. Um, she uh, became the advisor. Now, Rob, SADD, too, if you want to call it that, apparently was an offshoot of the uh, Students Against Drunk Driving, or tell me a little bit about that. How did that come into being? Um, basically, what it is is they, they held a press conference in Boston, and what they were trying to do was to combat the overwhelming um, amount of athletes that are getting into drugs, such as, as you see on the poster, there's marijuana, yes. there's mm -hmm. steroids, and they're trying to combat that. And they had various um, sports, f f like, I don't know, not really officials, but role models, role models and mm -hmm. coaches. There was Mr. Sullivan from the Patriots was there. And what they decided they were trying to d create was a drug-free generation of athletes. Mm -hmm. And again, it was Bob Anastas that was starting it, and they, it's still, as he said, the same basic group. It's still sad, mm -hmm. whether you, you can call it either way, students against driving drunk, mm -hmm. student athletes to test drugs. Um, so it's almost a specialized section. It's, yeah, it's sad. either, okay. you're still combating the mm -hmm. same problem, is all mm -hmm. they're trying to do. This is just mm -hmm. a different way of looking at it. Instead of just going at the students in general, they're going at the student athletes because they, 
as Mr. Nassis said, are sort of the role models for the rest of the kids. Well, I think this is true, that people do tend to look up to athletes. So I think what you do sets an example for a lot of other kids, too. And that was their hopes for the little mm -hmm. kids to come to the, to the Lincoln Sudbury's mm -hmm. hockey games, football games, baseball games, whatever you might say, and to see the other kids. What they plan to do is, I have a sticker here, mm -hmm. um, okay. what they were hoping kids would do was to look at, to, you put this sticker on the back of your helmet, and okay. they want the children to see this and to realize that the older kids are against drugs. Mm -hmm. They don't like yeah. other people to be involved in drugs, mm -hmm. and they're hoping that that will set an example for all the rest of the kids to, mm -hmm. like they said, create a drug-free generation of athletes. Well. Is any of this involved in some fundraising by any chance? Is there any effort that you're making to be able to help support this? The organization at school? Um, yeah, yes. like mm -hmm. we've, we saw the bumper stickers. Um, okay, well, okay, I see we've got one over here that says, say no to drugs, which is your basic message yeah. uh, that you would put on your car. And I notice now you have this other one, my life is in your hands, and that's, a lot more true than a lot of people realize. Mm -hmm. That's trying to tell the driver behind you. As you know, I don't believe in drinking and driving, and I hope that you don't either, because as it says, my life is in your hands. So it's mm -hmm. trying to prevent all people from drinking and driving, not just saying that I don't believe in it. It's sort of a universal message. Okay. What we're going to do is. Um... Friends don't let friends drive drunk, so you're bringing in a little peer support over yeah. here too. Mm -hmm. And that's apparently very important, at least at your age level, that the fact that a lot of you do oppose drugs, you're functioning very beautifully without them. Are you both involved in athletics? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that... Uh, and the keychain that we have is basically the same thing as the bumper mm -hmm. sticker. It has the insignia on the front and on the back. It says, friends don't okay. let friends drive drunk. I don't know if we can see this well enough over there, but it is the logo of the uh, SADDs and of course again the motto friends don't let friends drive drunk. How much responsibility do you think people should take for themselves on some of this? I know support groups are great but when it comes down to the final wire... Well, you mean driving drunk or what do you mean by... In responsibility? How much individual I mean. responsibility should we lay on the drunk driver? Not necessarily just the students. 100%. Just I mean, yes, okay. there's plenty of peer pressure, yeah. but, I mean, I can't tell Rob, you know, drink and then drive. And if he, you know, it's, he just shouldn't, you know, listen to whatever I or whatever someone tells mm -hmm. me to do. You know, you, you do what's when it, right. When it comes down to it, it's your own personal decision. You know you've been drinking. You know that you've had too much to drink. It's your own decision to get into the car or not. And that's what we're hoping through SAD to get people to realize your decision should be not to get in the car. And it, mm -hmm. we, you know, the motto, friends don't let friends drive drunk, it also brings in your friends. You should try to prevent them from getting in the car. And there's a lot more kids in Sudbury now that are becoming the designated driver. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, we realize we can't prevent the drinking. That's always going to be a problem. So what we try to do is, instead of going specifically after drinking, Try and get an alternative mm -hmm. message, exactly. Mm -hmm. Try and get kids to either to take it in their friends' lives into their own hands mm -hmm. and to say, all right, I won't drink tonight, I will drive. That way you'll get home safely. And ways we've done mm -hmm. that is by, uh, let's say, scare tactics. Mm -hmm. um, but that could be one, I suppose. Uh -huh. Some, yeah. you know, I, I know kids mm -hmm. who have learned the hard way you know, they've told me how they've driven drunk, and they've scared themselves to never do it again. Is this an accident, or perhaps a near accident that you um, made yeah, them realize? Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> you know, they mm -hmm. just, <laughs> once anyway. is enough, they realize the hard mm -hmm. way. But, um, you know, we've brought in uh, uh, Framingham Union Hospital nurses, mm -hmm. slideshows, we've... Uh, Very graphic slideshow. Yes, I can imagine that seeing some of those brings it home to you, what can happen. It yeah. doesn't always happen to somebody else. There were many that couldn't bear to look, so it was things like that where we were trying to say, this is what happens if you get into that vehicle when you're drunk. Now, I know your senior prom is coming up pretty soon, mm -hmm. and that seems to be one of the 
times that people kind of forget themselves a little bit. One suggestion I've heard, and I guess is being a little, is being practiced and is popular now, is to hire the limousine. Is that kind of thing going on over here? Is that yeah, taking, uh, uh, taking hold with some of our Lincoln Sudbury kids? Yeah, I mean, basically the senior mm -hmm. prom, I would say most of the kids have, you know, grouped together and gotten a, a limousine amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, what SAD has done is we had a raffle, which it was $2 a ticket, mm -hmm. and sold as many as we sold, and we had a drawing uh, Friday before vacation for a winner, and the winner, there were three prizes, the first uh, place prize, you'd get a uh, free limo ride, the limo right, a yeah. free limo ride, $2 you know, ticket, uh -huh. uh, two to the prom and from, second prize was a tuxedo, Mm -hmm. And the third okay. was um, corsage or, you know, the flowers. The corsage and the boutonniere you got mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. donated, so. Um, so that's one way we're trying to prevent or show, you know, sad is, is within the school. Where is the senior prom this year? So the Boston China. So it's in town? Yeah. Okay, so it does make a big difference then. Yeah. Uh, you're not talking just going to the next town or the... Mm -hmm. uh, the local hotels. It is a Boston ride. Yeah. Um, regardless of that, I'm going to the junior prom, and that's over in Brandeis University. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the fact that it's very close, many kids are getting the limo anyway, just because it's become a common practice. Okay. You so want the limo. That's a good trend uh, yeah. to hear, too. Um, it's been a little while since I've been in high school. Is it supposed to be not quite the thing to do to have your parents drive you to the prom or pick you up and take you back? Or is there yeah. any other... Uh, uh, I would say more kids would drive themselves and then not drink parents. until after the, okay. yeah, the, the parent thing is, I would say, out in today's generation. Mm -hmm. Possibly a brother, sister, older. But. <laughs> but definitely not your folks. Okay, I noticed you had this contract over here, too. Do you want to explain this a little bit to us, too? This contract for life. Um, it's, uh, what it is, basically. It this way a little bit. Okay, and then uh, maybe you can go into it for us. Basically, the contract is mm -hmm. a contract between the teenager and the parent mm -hmm. in a home, um, which basically says that uh, if you're drunk, um, I agree to call for adv uh, advice or transportation at any hour from any place. If I ever am in a situation mm -hmm. where I need drinking, where I have been drinking or a friend or, you know. Basically, it, it just talks about um, you can tr your parents will do what you ask. Not at that time. You know, if you're at a party and you need a ride home mm -hmm. because you're drunk, you can't drive yourself. Oh, it could be es your escort who brought you might uh, mm -hmm. be unable to drive you too or you don't feel safe with them. The, the, the teenager mm -hmm. should, um, at that point, call his or her parent without feeling guilty or... That's what the contract's for. It's an, it's an agreement between the parent and the child that the child, if they have been drinking or their, their ride, as you said, their escort mm -hmm. has been drinking, mm -hmm. they agree to call at any hour and not be afraid to call their parents for a ride. And the parents agree to... The parents have to also sign it. That they agree that they will come and pick up the child, bring them home, no questions asked, and they can de you know deal with it at another time. Mm -hmm. And the parents also agree that they won't drink and drive. They will find an alternate ride home, whether it be to call the child or to call a friend. But they okay. will, it's so an agreement, it's a mutual agreement between the two. This is a two-way thing then yeah. that you're telling me, that the first agreement being between the parent and the child, if the child calls, just There's, come. <laughs> just come, no questions. <laughs> Don't get into a big thing about uh, why did you have too much to drink or anything else. Just, just be come. glad that they called. <laughs> be glad that they called because at least you know that they'll get home. But this other little wrinkle is an interesting arrangement that if your folks have decided that they are not drivable, that they can call you to come pick them up. Mm -hmm. too. I kind of like that idea. It wouldn't have occurred to me. It's a role model to, uh, type thing uh -huh. where, you know, you grow up watching your parents and you hope to do the right mm -hmm. thing by doing what they have done. Do you think maybe our whole approach to drinking could stand a little overhaul? I don't know what the situation is now, but certainly when I was with Pan American Airways and traveling back and forth to Europe, they didn't have a drinking age at all. You were supposed mm -hmm. to learn how to handle that at home, and by not having it be something forbidden, 
you really didn't develop a mystique around it and learned how to handle it a little easier, or faster, or to not care about it one way or the other because it was always available. Maybe some of our thinking has to change in how we're handling this whole thing. So. Possibly. Yeah. Um, all, like I said earlier, there's no way to, that we can prevent the students from drinking. Why students mm -hmm. drink, I don't know. They drink mm -hmm. because they enjoy it or they feel it makes them feel more grown up or rebellious, whatever. Possibly. Rebellious against their parents or against the law for mm -hmm. saying you can't. Um, yeah. Such so goes with drugs. All SAD is trying to do is say, hopefully, if you drive to a party, you, you won't drink while you're at that party. Maybe at the same time, that'll stop the drinking. We can't really be sure, but we hope it might. Well, this is the thing. It's very hard for people like us to get into the psychology of why somebody drinks, because obviously the reason you're involved is because you don't feel that need or dependency on it. I don't feel that need or dependency on it, so what makes somebody tick that does it is... I guess something that uh, people can argue about all the time. Mm -hmm. I just thought it might be interesting to note that um, in Sudbury now, we had what I'm going to consider a fairly low number of people being picked up uh, operating under the influence. Um, I have 47 listed for 1987 and then 50 of them in 1988, meaning we've picked up three. But since most of these happen on the Boston Post Road, it's not necessarily people mm -hmm. who live in Sudbury that are involved in this. Have you ever been involved or stopped at a roadblock or seen any of them in yeah, town? Yeah, I live Quiet. right off Route 20 and coming yes, home on a Friday, Saturday mm -hmm. night. I usually go right through roadblocks, mm -hmm. which tend to happen this time of year. Baseball mm -hmm. season, prom time. Prom time, yeah. So they have had them? Every year. Every, all the time. You can almost see them coming. Is that... You know, they're, they're the same time almost. of year, almost. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, what happens when you get stopped at a roadblock? I, I haven't had that happen to me. Um, on Route 20, sometimes traffic going one direction will turn into the Star Market parking lot. You have to pull in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thanks to the officers. Um, sometimes uh, just a flashlight, um, you know, windows are rolled down and just a quick glance. Mm -hmm. uh, if um, I'm not sure the legality, but it might be if there's more than four people in a car, then they search the car a little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so, you know, if they suspect something, they can search mm -hmm. the car. Okay. Just, you know, uh, breathalyzer possibly mm -hmm. for the driver, but then you're, you're free to go. It seems a lot of the time, though, they seem to be checking the people coming into town more than the people going out of mm -hmm. town. When okay, you're leaving so town, mm -hmm. it's sometimes just a flashlight check just to make sure that there's no mm -hmm. alcohol that, you know, that they can see mm -hmm. within the car, and they just ask what, you know, where you're going or whatever, and you're on your way. Coming in, they're a little bit more thorough to make sure that mm -hmm. it's not happening within their town. Uh, you know, maybe they assume that it's up to the other towns, the neighboring towns, to stop it on their own. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. So you know they come from time. Yep. Uh, They'll be out. They will be out. Probably a little bit more in the summertime than Come the prom time. Of... There's more uh, more officers. Um, there seems registry to be more. cops. <laughs> yeah, registry uh -huh. police. Um, there's uh -huh. yeah a lot of cars, police cars around town. Now, from what I have understood, I don't think many of our own students have necessarily been brought in for operating under the influence. Mm -hmm. Not that many. Okay. And how have things been in the athletic department? At one point, I can remember reading, not necessarily about students, about athletes uh, protesting about testing for drugs. And mm -hmm. these have been more apt to be the professional athletes that I've run into. But have we literally done any drug testing here at uh, the schools? No. Not to my knowledge. No, no, it's just been a matter of just working amongst yourselves, I guess. What uh, coaches have been doing um, have been setting... Uh, for you, well, um, Sorry, like um, they have to be in at a certain hour, ten o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah. If they have a, if they have a game, if the I have a game day. the next day, oh, yeah. you have to be home at a certain hour, and the coach will call. And if you're not home at ten o'clock when he calls, you don't play in the game the next day. Mm -hmm. And that works because right now in lacrosse <laughs> season, varsity mm -hmm. lacrosse players, you have to be home. And if he calls, mm -hmm. and he has called many times, mm -hmm. if you're not home, you won't play. And 
I haven't had anybody set out a game yet, so they all seem okay. to be getting so going. So they have been enforcing this yeah. uh, mm-hmm. for you, and it's been working then. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Do you have things like regular meetings, or do you get together at any particular time to make any plans? To... Wednesday after school, a lot of mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Every other, yeah, couple, okay. you know, once, twice a month. And how many kids do you have now from Lincoln Sudbury that have become part of this? Over 100. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. let's see. Through the mm-hmm. years, um, my sophomore year, we had mm-hmm. five of us, you know, just uh-huh. a little group. Yeah. Last year, we had about 30. Mm-hmm. Last year, there really wasn't many people. They, they weren't actively involved. They came, they just sat there mm-hmm. and did nothing. Um, this year, there are about 100 people. You know, like students um, in the bunch are very active. Mm-hmm. So it has been growing. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, what's mm-hmm. happened. Do most of the kids have their own cars by that time? Yeah. You know, do what, what's more apt to happen as a senior? Would they be driving themselves to mm-hmm. the prom, pretty much? Well, yeah, they have their mm-hmm. own cars, but mm-hmm. prom, no, prom, prom, you get the limo. Just seems to be a little bit more class, or say, you know, uh-huh. or, or for lack of a better wor- better mm-hmm. word. Um, or the Winnebago this year. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> well, as I had mentioned to you a little bit earlier, some of our other countries take a very strong view against drunken driving. And I know I mentioned El Salvador as one that uh, just comes right to the point. You're executed by a firing squad. Uh, Bulgaria gives you a second chance. The second time you're caught drunken driving. It's the firing squad for you. Now, I don't think we're ever going to get to where we agree that that's going to be the uh, the way to go over here. But do you think that maybe some greater penalties might not be a better idea? Really, uh, thinking in terms of revoking a license, which I think is very important to almost all of us, not just the students. It may be it may seem more important to students, yeah. but of course, if you hold a job, no matter what you do, you almost have to have a driver's license. What's your feeling about some of these penalties being a little bit stronger than they have been in the past? Uh, I know you said you had gone to a press conference not too long ago. Did some of that come up in that? Uh... Um, yeah, Bob Anastas had said um, that I believe in '83 when they decided that when SAT had started to get kicked off, uh, mm-hmm. the amount of drug-related or um, drunk driving-related deaths was mm-hmm. somewhere around 7,000 or so. And in 87, it had dropped to about 4,000. Now, whether that was mm-hmm. because of yeah. SAD or because of people mm-hmm. just on their own wising up and realizing mm-hmm. that too many deaths are occurring, I'm not really sure. Um, but that, it's according to him, it's, it's dropped drastically. Mm-hmm. Well, and, yeah, I mean, I think possibly 89. He has a dream, Bob Anastas and uh, Mr. Colony and the vice president. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's to be under a thousand, mm-hmm. um, and maybe they're doing the numbers decreasing um, because you know it's become more widely known. Well, the social acceptance of yeah. but, a drunk has gone yeah. way down. But the law really, um, I mean, I guess it's not as tough. It, as it could be because mm-hmm. people are still doing still it. Still doing it. I think what puzzles me is why somebody who was caught the first time will be caught a second, third, and fourth time too. And I, I guess it's like that's like they're allowed to. It's, yes. It seems like yeah. the laws. Yeah. Which is why I think now they're trying to turn it over mm-hmm. to the younger kids. Mm-hmm. And like Bob and Asa said, you turn it over to the students. That's his plan. Mm-hmm. He started the programs yes. but, and now he's turning them over to the kids and he's hoping that that will decrease the mm-hmm. amount of deaths or, you know, amount of t- kids using drugs. Um, I guess along with the hockey player dying that started SAD, he had various mm-hmm. reasons for starting yeah. student athletes to test drugs, one of which he said was Lenny Bias. Yes. Who died of an overdose. So well publicized. he's now mm-hmm. trying to use that as a way to scare kids into mm-hmm. stopping using, stop using drugs. And turning over the students and turning over the athletes, they want to start a new generation, and that's how he's planning on dro- making it drop. Mm-hmm. As the older people that are already sort of in that mode that they mm-hmm. accept drinking they accept and drive, it they accept than... it more, they're trying to get the yeah. kids to now not accept it. So hopefully, as mm-hmm. the years grow on, 
it'll be virtually non-existent. Mm -hmm. And that's his ultimate plan. <laughs> what do you think of this thought now that a bartender can be held responsible if somebody who was drinking at their bar has an accident and is considered under the influence? I don't like that. I that's fair. fair. It's yeah. not. I, I guess we, we must be very much in agreement with each other, which is why yeah. I asked you before how much personal responsibility should a person have. I, I, think, yeah, they, I don't understand why a bartender should be yeah. responsible for another adult uh, either. Right now I'm working in a restaurant, I'm a host, mm -hmm. and I see plenty of people come in and out. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to tell who's mm -hmm. had too much to drink and who hasn't. And the manager has picked out people that should ha that should be shut off mm -hmm, is the term mm -hmm. that should stop drinking because they've had too much and I wouldn't even thought of it. So how a bartender mm -hmm. who has so many different people to work with can mm -hmm. decide that they should stop drinking is beyond me and I don't see why that should be their yeah. responsibility. I confess to naivete too. I can't necessarily tell when somebody has had something to drink or too much to drink because it doesn't even occur to me to think in those terms. But even the host of a party now is being held responsible if a guest has too much to drink and goes out driving. Mm -hmm. And I guess the only solution there is that you just don't serve alcoholic beverages likewise to if somebody the host, in your home. Likewise, yeah. if the host or parents aren't home. And, uh, That's right. And and if, if a student has a party on Friday night, parents went out for the evening, and someone gets hurt, the parents are liable. Yes, they they are. might not be home, they might not know about it, but it's at the, their home and they mm -hmm. are liable. Yes. And it strikes me that it's going at it a little bit backwards, that instead of telling you to be responsible for your own behavior... They're trying to make unresponsible. They're trying to make... They're trying, they know that that person's irresponsible, so I guess they're trying yeah. to make a responsible person. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess, as the kids might say, take the rap for what somebody else is doing. Well, it's interesting to me that you have the same view as, uh, as I do on that. Are there any hints that you might want to give somebody as to how to avoid the drinking and driving or even avoid having members of your own group be ones that you would have to watch for drinking and driving? What would be your message to some of your friends if you... Uh, well, like we tell members of SAD, if you see another person who, has, who you know has been drinking getting into a car, mm -hmm. try and stop them. Try and get their keys from them. Try and get mm -hmm. in the car and drive them home for them. Find some way to not let them drive. Um, Only so that, that doesn't work too hard. That doesn't work too well because kids feel it's not their place. The person thinks that they're responsible enough and they're okay so they can drive, mm -hmm. there's not much more you can do. So what we have to try and do is get each individual to realize when, it's too, when they've had too much. And that's the hard part. Would it work if they uh, were not invited to the next party and being told that that's the reason why, that you see no reason for having to watch out for them if they won't uh, help themselves? Uh, I would probably agree. And it's not really a question of being invited too much yeah. most mm -hmm. of the time. You just sort of find out where a party is you and you go. When it's happening and you they, go. They should and, break out. Uh, yep. I don't know. The only, the only message I could say is with anything that uh, before you do something, you really should know the facts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, pros and cons to anything. Mm -hmm. And in drinking and driving, how dangerous... Um, what effects can come about? Mm -hmm. You know, suspension of license, uh, imprisonment, and whatnot. Well, let me finish up with some of the list of things that, as I had mentioned to you, some of the other countries do. Uh, South Africa, you get a 10-year prison term, and you get a fine of $10,000 or both. Uh, Turkey, the drunk drivers are taken 20 miles out of town, and they're made to walk back, and they have a police escort making sure that they walk back. Malaya, the drunk driver, is jailed, and if he's married, his wife goes to jail also. That's a little switch. They have often had the husband responsible for the wife. This is one of the few times I'm seeing that they're holding a wife responsible for what her husband uh, does. Norway, you get three weeks in jail at hard labor, and the drunk driver loses his license for a year. A second offense within five years, and the license is revoked permanently. 
Finland and Sweden is an automatic jail sentence for a year at hard labor. England, a year in jail, a one-year suspension, and a fine of $250. Russia, the driver's license is revoked for life. France, it's a year in jail, the loss of your license, and a fine of $1,000. In Poland, it's jail and fine are determined by the judge. All drunk drivers are forced to listen to a set of lectures on the effects of drunkenness, the effect on their families, and the effect on the community. Some of those are a lot harsher than some of the things that we've heard today as the penalties for drinking and driving. I thank the both of you for being here to let us know what is happening at Lincoln Sudbury. I think it's very encouraging that we have some of this activity going on and the fact that it is growing. I know that you're graduating this year, Rob, yep. so I guess you're going to be carrying on for next year. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you want to tell us about some of these things that you have here? Where can somebody get hold of these if they would like to have the bumper sticker, sticker excuse me, my life is in your hands, and say no to drugs. And for those of you whose folks don't know about the contract for life, I think that would be good to bring home. Mm -hmm. And yes, this one a, is a good one, too. The friends don't let friends drive drunk. You can get these um, keychains, a lot of information and whatnot, at, uh, in the North House at Ellis. Um, you can also, I'm sure, get it uh, through the nationwide organization in Marlboro. Mm -hmm. um, there are ways of getting. We're also planning, sometime in May, we haven't been set on a date, sad of day. a sad day mm -hmm. in which... We would promote SAD, promote the fact that it's in the community, promote mm -hmm. people and encourage them to do, to have designated drivers and such, and we'd be selling this to mm -hmm. publicize that it's in town. Would somebody be able to give you a call if they wanted to know more about this, or is there a phone number or contact that they could use? Um, yeah, I mean, call the high school, uh, 9961. Mm -hmm. And okay. North, ask for North House. And Ms. Alaska, the North House secretary, who's the advisor mm -hmm. for SAD, would she be able to tell the person anything they wanted to know about SAD in the community or in general? So it would be the regular Lincoln Sudbury phone number. Yeah. Of 443 9961. I want to thank you both for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for a lot of your good advice. And everything you heard today was for the record.